Hello and welcome everyone to like DocuSign's first meetup of 2022. We're going to be talking about envelope configuration, SMS envelope configuration, which is something I think is super, super cool and really fun to, to do. So with that, I am going to first off, shameless plug before I do anything else, because I have a captive audience. Our next meetup is February um, 24th. It's a Thursday, and we're going to be talking about federated search for CLM. So mark your calendars for that. You will find it on meetups.com. And if you follow me on any social medias, it will be there too. So feel free to stalk me on social media. It's all good. No, no stalking among friends. With that, I want to say... <laughs> First off, my name is Lauren Dunn. I didn't even introduce myself. I'm a senior Salesforce evangelist here at DocuSign. I am joined by Prachi Mishra, who is a senior product marketing manager, and Lu Luan Li hang on, I got this, Liquid Pun Pisk Piscuit. Did I get that right? I've been practicing oh, so, okay. Liquid Pun Piscuit, but yeah, all good. Who is a senior product manager. And then we also have my favorite Salesforce developer, who was my developer when I was a Salesforce admin, Vineet Peranik, who is a senior manager here in the engineering department, um, but was my developer way back when, when I was an admin. So, and I love to play the game, Stump Vineet. So if you do have some questions, um, Vineet is the guy who is the magic eight ball, who knows everything. So feel free to ask questions. And with that, I'm going to start our presentation. Uh, again, my name is Lawan Likit Panpisit. I am very excited to be here. So before we jump into the demo, just want to introduce the context that we're in right now and a couple of persona that we'll be using throughout the demo. Uh, so we are in, in the context of this company called Tally Solar Corporation. It's basically our fictitious company for the demo. Um, we are going to look into the opportunity or the court flow which is the most important flow of any organization in most cases, right? There are three persona that we're going to be using throughout. The first one, the most important one, those who make it happen, right? Aaron, who is the admin. He is basically the Salesforce and DocuSign admin who is going to create and configure the template, the envelope template for the uh, user within the organization. And of course, usually he'll be on his desktop. Um, Sarah, who is the sender, she is an account executive for the company. And she is right now working very closely with one of her prospects, um, Mary Wilson, who is um, procurement director for Atlas um, Incorporation. And of course, you know, like Sarah is the main device for her. She's on the go. She's really on the mobile. Um, so that's uh, these are just the main persona. And let's just jump to the actual demo itself. I am going to switch the screen share um, to the product itself. And let me know if you guys see the Salesforce screen. Okay, perfect. Yes. And let me move this Zoom handle out of the way. It's quite blocky. <laughs> All right, cool. So um, as Prachi has mentioned, if you have the new um, app, uh, DocuSign app launcher installed, this is what you're gonna see. The way that you come to here is you click all of this hamburger and then click on this DocuSign app launcher. The first page you're gonna be landing on is this DocuSign setup. This is what Prachi has mentioned earlier that the app launcher consolidated all of the application, not just the e-signature part itself. You notice that you have Gen here, you have Negotiate here as well. You don't need to have all of the license because some of the component are shared. As you can see, even for me, uh, some of the component are still locked and I only have the e-signature on, right? But just to, just to get you introduced to this, um, what, um, I am right now, I am Aaron. So what Aaron gonna be doing, he locked in and what he is going to do right now is he is going to create a new template. Now, of course, if he's already have a lot of template configured, the only thing that he will need to do is to change the delivery option. But since we have uh, a bit of time today, I think I'm gonna start fresh and let's create the template together. So I'll give it a good name. In this case, I will say send a uh, new code. Um, Right, and then for the data source, we will plug it into the opportunity because we want this signing experience for the sales team who is working on an opportunity. So I'll click next right here. And then what you will notice is that with this new e-signature for Salesforce, we are introducing 
the step by step uh, user guided process for the admin. This makes it much, much easier. That means, honestly, I call this Aaron that he's uh, Salesforce and DocuSign admin, but technically, any business analyst who really understand the process and understand how Salesforce works can configure this as well. You don't really have to always rely on a technical um, IT admin in your organization. So the first step is to upload a document. I do have, um, assuming that um, within Tally organization, they do have the standard um, document for the opportunity to be sent out to the customer. So um, I am uploading that. Next step is to uh, select the recipient. And starting off by, of course, adding the recipient. And there are a couple of ways to add the recipient right here. The first um, and the most important way is, of course, try to pull the record from the Salesforce. And of course, you also have the way to pull the recipient from other sources as well. We'll go through them one by one. Um, look at few, you have a couple of options, whether you want to include the owner, the person who create um, the opportunity or the one who last modified by. That is an option for you. Another option, which I think it's going to be uh, the option that most of you would be interested in is when we select something that is related to the opportunity record. So, for example, in this case, um, I would uh, pick the opportunity contact role. And of course, you can add the filter right here. Um, in this case, um, I am going to uh, select the role, those who has uh, the role as a decision maker. Right, so that can be the future, but of course, depending on your process, how you configure Salesforce uh, role within your organization, this can be changed depending on how you see fit within your organization. Now, before I come to all of this option, let me just go through the other option that you have. For the user, you can also select a particular user as well if you want. This is like more like a hard coded, um, picking particular contact of the user. You can also just say that any sender who uh, perform the sending, um, they will have to um, be part of the recipient. That is fine too, right? For other sources, if you don't really know and you want it to, uh, to give it to the hand of your salesperson, you can just define like a blank um, or like a placeholder role kind of thing as well. You can just say signer. And what this means is that during the runtime, the person who is going to send it out will manually pick the recipient at that point. Signing group, same way you can identify the signing group right here. This is similar to the signing group that you have on the main DocuSign application. So coming back to the related list, our flow, what Aaron is gonna be doing is he gonna pre-configure this so that it's pull the related contact that associated in the opportunity. And of course, he wants to make sure that we pull the one who is the decision maker and not just the business user. For the uh, action, of course, I leave this as a need to sign for the first recipient. For the delivery option, this is what we're talking about, right? Instead of just sending out a standard email, in this case, Aaron is going to do email and SMS together. Of course, email is still gonna be the main or formal way to deliver a quote, right? But of course, SMS is gonna get us um, a better response rate. If you want, you can also add access authentication number as well, or you can also even add a private message here. But I'm just gonna leave it default right now and just click add. This is the first recipient. Of course, um, you all can always add additional recipient. In this case, what I would do is that I will add um, the, uh, let's say the owner of the opportunity to be the one that should receive a copy, right? And again, uh, similarly here, you can, you know, like choose to just send them an email or email plus SMS. I'll just leave it as email for now because it's just re really just receiving a copy. So there you go in the template, we specify that in an opportunity when you send it out, we're gonna send it out to two person. One is the decision maker for that opportunity. And then the second one is the owner will receive a copy. So I'll click next right here. The next step is going to show um, Aaron, the list of all of the merge view that it's available. Now, of course, I already have all of these pre-configured, but you can add uh, additional merge view right here as well. If you feel like there's some additional merge view that you want to use. I'm just going to skip that for now. And then we are going to move along to the place view step, which is the, uh, in a, which is the step to tag the signature block. 
So you notice here that it pulled the template that I uploaded in the first step right here. And then on the second page, I have some of the things right here as a placeholder. What I would do here is we're gonna go to the merge view. This is the merge view that you see that you have seen in the previous step. What I'll do here is that for the opportunity, I'm gonna put um, the related attribute right here so that during runtime, it pull this information from the opportunity itself. Let me just do that real quick. Um, the total goes here, the sales price goes here. In reality, um, of course you can choose to add more few. Um, I'm just gonna save time here and you notice that some of them, I basically just have it um, hard coded here just to save time. But wanted to show you how easy it is to get this up and run. And I want the total opportunity amount right here. Just to show you um, the merge view itself, if you click configure right here, then you see the detail of the merge view. You notice here that um, this is the information for the merge view, and then um, this is going to pull from the opportunity and the total amount on the opportunity itself. Now, the signature block, um, I'm gonna put the signature block right here, of course, that is the most important one. The date signs goes here, and then the name of the person who signed. Now, one last thing that I wanted to show you, which I think is the one that is very important to this process, is that we want to ask the signer to also enter the purchase order number as well. And this view, it's going to write back to the Salesforce record. So the way that I have this configure, wow, it's a little bit slow this morning, huh? Uh, so the way that I have this configure, in the system is that this is basically um, a PO number, which is a custom attribute on the opportunity. And I set it to write back to the customer, right? And then I set this to the required field so that it's required for the signer to enter this information before they can complete the signature, um, the signing. So that's how it goes. And I think that's pretty much that. I'm gonna go ahead to save and close. And then the next step is of course, to add um, or configure any additional options for the sending. Do you want to send out the reminder? You can set that in this case, um, I'm not gonna set any reminder. Do you want this to be expired? Most of the code or um, the uh, proposal that you send to your customer, you might want to set the expiration to like 30 days after that. You might want to restart the conversation in terms of the pricing and everything, right? The next one, the sending experience. This is what we're talking about, right? If you set this to quick send, the only thing that the, uh, the, the salesperson is going to have the control over is just to hit the send, verify the recipient, and that's it. They don't have to do anything extra. So it's very convenient for them. Document write back. So this is depending on your business process flow. I always suggest that we save the document right back to Salesforce opportunity. But if those contain some sensitive information that you just want to leave those on the DocuSign server, that's fine too. You don't have to set this. But if you check this, the signed copy would get saved onto the opportunity in this case. The next section, I think this one is going to be really helpful for all of you, especially in the, uh, in the opportunity flow. What you can do here is to set the field on the, opportunity, on the opportunity record to be updated. In this case, I'm going to choose when everything is all complete, all of the party sign, in this case, envelope completed. What we are going to do is we are going to set the state of the opportunity to be close one. But of course, this can be set to, you know, like depending on your business process flow, you can set to the status that you want, or you can also choose a different few name as well. There's a, a lot of the few name that we provided available to you, right? So let me just, in this case, let me just set the next stage to close one as we talked about. And that's about it. The last step is really just to name the custom button. And the default value for the custom button it's just going to take from the template name that you name. So I'm going to leave it sent new code for now. I'm going to select all of the page layout to make sure that anyone who's using the opportunity can see this new button. And then save and finish.
And that's all. Aaron is done. My environment is a little bit slow. In reality, this should go much quicker after you hit save. And of course, if you already have this uh, template configured in your organization, the only thing that you would have to do is to hit edit and then change the recipient option right here. So you click here, you go to edit, and then you change the delivery. That is the only place that you have to change if you're already on um, this uh, envelope template and you have and you already have something set up in your organization. So let me go back out. So Aaron, it's done. Now what I'll do is I will switch gear. Um, I changed the hat right now. I am Sarah, the sender right now. So as I mentioned earlier, Sarah is in the conversation with her prospect, Mary Wilson, and she is ready to basically send out this quote to Mary. So you notice here that on this opportunity, she has the list of the product right here. And the only thing that she will have to do, actually, let me refresh the screen um, because we have a new button right here. You notice that this new button, this is the one that I have just created. Um, like a minute ago or 30 seconds ago. I'll hit this send new quote right here. What it will do is it will pull the contact related or associated with that opportunity. You see that Mary has got pulled here with, along with the email address and the phone number. And of course, because I am the owner of the opportunity, I will receive a copy. You have an option to choose or to configure the message if you want. You don't have to, but if, if that's what you want, you can do that. And of course, you can set whether you want to send out the reminder or when will this be expired. As I mentioned earlier, most of the cases, maybe you want to set this to expire in 30 days, 10 days, 14 days, depending on your business need. So what I'll do, I'll leave everything default right here and just hit send. And that's all. Send for signature. That's done. So... Sarah can now move on to a different, the next opportunity, basically. Now, let's go over to Mary, who is the signer. Yep, here I am. I'm sharing my screen. Can Everyone can see. So I just got a text message right here from DocuSign, from Sarah DeSander. I just click on the link, let it load. Going to continue. Going to scroll down. As you can see, it's the exact same template that you saw. It's just on my mobile phone. I now have the line description, the quantity, sales price, the line amount, and total amount. I have a red box, which is a required field because they need my purchase order number. And I'm going to be very creative here. I know. And put in my purchase order number, and then I'm going to sign. I'm going to adopt my signature and save. And then I'm going to click next. And that's it. Oh, sorry, I'm lying. I have to click finish and continue. And that's it, I'm done signing. Awesome. So now let's switch back to Sarah again. So, um, and I forgot to mention, Sarah will get a notification through email. And if I set, if I were to set the delivery for Sarah to be uh, SMS as well, then Sarah will also get a notification on SMS as well. But basically what I like to show you here is the follow-up process that we configured together. Give it a little bit of a time to reload and update the status. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not so sure what happened, why it's a little bit slow. It just showed that Mary had just real, but let me refresh it one more time. It should just say sign. It's excited for the weekend. It's taking its time because it's right? nearly Friday. So they're just like, mm. I know the status is taking a little bit longer, but let me show you right here, the PO number that Mary has just entered before she signed, one, two, three, four, it's get updated right here already. Back immediately to the opportunity record without Sarah having to do anything or try to like call her up like, hey, can you make sure that you enter that PO number before we proceed, right? Same thing here for the signed copy as well. D 
the signed copy that Mary has just did, of course, I have my uh, demonstration tag right here, but in, in the production, you won't have that. We have that capture along with the signature right here, attached directly to the, to the opportunity record. You don't have to drill down or you don't have to try to figure out where to find this information. It's right there on the opportunity. And let me refresh one more time. Hopefully it's already make its way for the status. Hmm. Interesting. Not quite yet, uh, but it view very soon. Um, right. I want to just hit view all on the right hand <laughs> side. Yeah, I know. It's it's just a little bit slow this morning. And I'm not so sure why. It might be because of my environment that I'm testing on. So, Luan, um, I think someone had recommended it, it might just be hidden in that status if you click view all. It might be below that. Yeah. This it, oh. yeah, it's not this one. Um <laughs> <laughs> But I, I know what you mean. But of course, if you wanted to see the detail of the status, you can click that view all. Um, I think it's just something funky with our environment this morning that makes it um, a little bit slow on the status. But as you can see here, all of the follow up status that we sorry, um, this, the, the business process that we configure, um, it's already kicked in. The PO number has been updated. The file has been attached and also the status that we set together has now set to close one. So just so you know, this is very handy. And as you can see, it's a click, not code. You don't have to write any single API at all uh, in order to attach this to your existing business process.